Happy Monday, lads. Welcome to the City Social, Manchester's Blue Show. Sounds good, that City Social, doesn't it? I like that. Yeah, I love it. It's really, the good thing about using the word social is there's not much planning needed from my side. So instead of the usual 40 minutes of making notes, I could kind of wing it with five or six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so I quite like it. There's less there's less stress and pressure, especially as, as it's dinner time and I need something to eat. So that's always good. But there's been quite a bit of news in the last couple of days, hasn't there? Um, did, did you see the um, the new city kit get released on Puma's website? Yeah. Slow yeah. Hand- Slow hand clap to the Puma web development team for that. Well done, guys. <laughs> Someone's getting sacked in the morning. <laughs> I quite I bet like that it. That was a publicity yeah. stunt, to be honest. <laughs> that must be one of the very few that actually like it. No, I, I like it. I, I really like it. I, I, I said when I first, when I first saw the rumor mill on um, that, that, that what's that footy website that often rele- releases them, but it's pretty bob on. When I saw it, I thought that's special. That I like that. I'm buying that 100. I don't often buy city shirts, even though you wouldn't, you wouldn't think that behind me. The, <laughs> a majority of my shirts, uh, I'd probably say you could probably see all the home shirts in blue behind me. The rest of them are all away shirts okay? or third strip. I don't, I don't know why I prefer to buy them, but that's the first home shirt for a long time. I thought that's gorgeous. I like it's that. Different, isn't it? Yeah, it's like it's like a marble effect, isn't it? I can't really. Yeah, well, are you not a fan, Chris? All, every time I look at it, all I can think of is sort of like a 1990s cruise ship pool. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's that we're trying to be jazzy because it's the 90s and it's, it's a bit... I think it could have been better. It's not the worst home cat, you know. It's, it's not the worst, but I just think it could have been a little better. I'm, but, just, I'm just glad it's not the typical plain Jane type thing. Yeah. I don't really, I'm not really a fan of plain shirts. Um, I don't know. I don't know why, really. But I, when I, when I saw it, I thought, Do you know, what? that's just different. I liked that. I quite. It's, I know what you mean by the by the, like the, the, the the bottom of the pool look. You kind of feel like you put your feet feet on it, you end up cutting your toes, don't you? It's, uh, <laughs> edges and white bits. I think my favourite home one was the uh, the first Edos one that we got. That sort of laser blue. You know when uh, Lara Croft was showing us stuff to Andy Morrison. Uh, oh. That's the bad boy. Yeah, <laughs> that's the bad boy. Yeah. yeah, Lara Croft. Yeah, that's quite sexy. That. What was the uh, eleven idiots don't often score? <laughs> yeah, that old chestnut <laughs> went around the school ground. Oh yeah, well done, the United <laughs> fans. You're so clever. <laughs> but no, when it, when it's but it's it's one of them that um, I'm waiting now to see what the wake is like because if that's the home kit, I only buy one because I, I don't want to spend 120 quid on two shirts. If I'm brutally honest. We don't, not, we don't even know how much this one's going to be. But if the, if like the black one this year, I've not bought it yet. But I always buy the shirts when they're reduced. I don't buy them. I don't buy them brand new. Um, just because I don't, I don't see the point. Because I wear, I wear old shirts all the time. So for me, it's I'm not particularly bothered whether it's a brand new shirt or not. I'm not, I'm not that way inclined. So I really want to see what the home kit's going to be like and the third kit before I choose. And then around October, November time, I'll, I'll, buy, I'll, buy, I'll buy what I want to get. But the black one, the black one's on sale now on City's website. It's which been reduced. So if you want, if you want one, there's, there's not that many around. So I need to pull my finger out if I want to get one. I can never get them in my size. <laughs> That's the problem Bless with you. being like the size of a uh, hibernating polar bear. You have to uh, kind of raid through eBay for the a hibernating polar bear. Did you just say? Uh, yeah, I can't, I've, I've kind of got the uh, the insulation of an Arctic seal. <laughs> So you mentioned polar bear and seal there. Are you, are you a pretty good swimmer? I can imagine him. <laughs> well, put it this way, a few years, probably about 10 years ago now, me and my mate went to uh, the Lake District. It was a really hot, sunny day, and I was like, sack it. I'm, you know, I'm 20 stone. I'm, I'm cooking here like a pig on a spit. So I stripped off to my boxes, jumped in the water. I'm loving it. And from the bank, you just heard this guy say, shit, quick, get Greenpeace. Oh! <laughs> I mean, I, I, I go along with it. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm floating, I'm a whale, whatever. You're boiling and burning on the beach, chilling away. <laughs> well, I've, I've been in your boat, mate. I, 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 the, the, high, the most I weighed was 26 stone. And oh. I wouldn't even touch a city shirt then. There's, there's, there's no way. I wouldn't have even got one on there. I don't think they did. Like, no, I would have needed like triple, triple X or double triple x or something like that but i never I had a year a couple of years of just not being able to buy city shirts in my size because it's just there's just absolutely zero point so yeah i feel i feel your pain mate i've been there and done that buddy so yeah i'll get, I'll get on to that yeah. try and drop it as well something breaks like i was playing football i did my acl i used to do wrestling i dislocated my shoulder wrestling? I just yeah i used to do wrestling like proper i had the leather pants and everything 
Yeah, that, that was be- yeah. You bought them before the wrestling, though, didn't you? That's the uh, come on now. <laughs> come on now. You can tell me. I must admit the boot. The boots I liked. I, I, I still have the boots somewhere. But, <laughs> yeah. Oh, brilliant. Well, we've we've had the uh, we, we've had a bit of a discussion, haven't we, on the on the group about um, Kevin De Bruyne's comments when he was interviewed by uh, HLN, the local newspaper in in in, um, in Belgium. And they've came out. They've come out recently because obviously, I think I think it's a it's a national thing with with with, with people from Belgium and Germany. They're quite direct and to the point, and they answer the questions that way as well. So when, when I first saw this, and I think it was City Dave wanted that mentioned, oh Kevin De Bruyne said this, this, and that. And I, as soon as I saw that, I was like, he's, he, he don't mean that. He doesn't mean he wants to leave. It's just you know he would have question marks if the two year ban was upheld, and it's just kind of like yeah, but you know what. I think anybody would in the right mind. I just still, even if that two years was there, I still couldn't see him leaving. I don't, I just, I don't know. What do you two think? It's similar to the Sterling Madrid thing saga, wasn't it? You know, yeah, he, he, he exactly. said he liked the idea of playing for Madrid and the media jumped on it and saying, oh, he wants to move, he wants to move, it's permanent, it's done, he wants to move. And I think that's the same thing. And it's exactly what you said where any club, whether your city status, whether you're in the lower leagues, if you get kicked out of any competition, any major competition for two years, any player's going to have doubts, especially at the Bruyne's age of 27, 28. He's just about to enter him his prime years. If he's two years out of the Champions League, he's obviously going to start thinking, isn't he? Yeah, of course he is. Of course he is. And it's... it's um... There's, a, there's, a, there's an argument to be said, and we've said on previous podcasts, whether Kevin De Bruyne or Fernandinho is going to be, going to be our next captain. You see when Kevin De Bruyne plays, he, he's got his heart on the sleeve. He just seems he seems to love the club a bit more than your average player. Yeah. And I, I don't know if, if you two think that, but when I see him play, I just think that whenever he plays, because he looks annoyed when we can see, he looks really annoyed when we can see goals, and he loves it when we score. And it's great to see that. Whether I'm just watching him with blue eyes, I don't know. Maybe it's because we gave him a second chance at the Premier League, and possibly had the crow the crow touch. I mean. He didn't really get much of a appreciation or anything at Chelsea. True. Um, but I, I think it must be just me that thinks the opposite. I mean, I know you've said that if, if any team's kicked out of a competition for two years, people, you know, the players start to question it. But I, whether it's naivety on my part, I can't understand why you would do that. If you're, I mean, face it, all professional footballers, they're playing a hobby. You know, it's something they love doing. Anyone who loves football would love to be paid to do it. Uh, I've, I've, I've followed Swansea City on the side for a few years and I remember when they got into the Europa League now, if they got a European ban I could understand why players would want to move to a, another club you know, with European quality we want to play there chances of Swansea qualifying for Europe every season are slim we're Man City, we're fighting for the title every year, we're winning yeah. trophies every year two years, that's a drop in the pond are you telling me that if, if we're Banned from Europe for two years, like manager at Belgium or manager of England are going to look at players like Sterling and De Bruyne and say, well, you're not playing in the Champions League, I can't pick you. Yeah, exactly. No, their first name on the sheet every week. If you really, you know, if, I think if players left the club because they said, oh, we're not in Europe and I want to play in Europe and I want to be the best, I'd say, you know what, do one. You know, because it, it's just like any relationship. You're, you know, if you're with someone and they're going through a hard time, you're not going to say, oh, look, I can't be dealing with this, I'm off. You, you stick by, you stick with them and you sort you, it you, out. And you, you, see you, you, you spot on, you see the character of people at the lowest point. And, you know, if, if in, in inverted commas, where, where, if City getting kicked out is, is a low point in De Bruyne's career, then let's see, if it does happen, let, let's see let's see what his reactions are and, and how, he, how he comes through with it. Yeah. And if he loves the club like we think he does, he should know exactly about our low points. And I mean, yeah. being kicked out of Europe for two years, but you know, 15 years ago, who'd have said we'd have been in Europe fighting for the Champions League? Yeah. yeah. You'd, have, you'd have got laughed out of work. Yeah, so, I, remember, I remember going to Stoke away when we got, when we won 5-2. And we got, both teams got relegated. 5-2, both teams got relegated. Yeah, that was... Teams. Yeah, so, you know, don't, don't talk to me about low points in football. Every, 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 every win we have in the Premier League at the moment is still, is still a bonus for me. I'm still in that mentality. Um, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Do you see um, um, Puma is after Sterling to be their poster boy? Mm. Yes. How, how do you think that's going to fare with him having a contact extension at City? It could work. I don't know why. It's, 
don't take this the wrong way. As soon as you said that, all I could see was Sterling on all fours, basically with just a painted kit. <laughs> I think this working night is getting to me because that's not the image I kind of want in my head. It's, it, it's them leather pants and then boots getting to you again, Chris, with that idea. <laughs> Those studded shoes he wears on a Saturday day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chris, I didn't need to wear that. That's funny. It's a lovely image, isn't it? You know. Oh, I don't. I don't know about that, but you know, each their own. What the media would say. What the media would say. God, the sun would tear him apart, wouldn't it? Make his armpit rampant. Oh, oh crap. <laughs> So the um, uh, Yang Yankuto came out with some good comments, didn't he, about Pep and City? The next Danny Alves, apparently. Did you do it? He's a good player. Yeah, did you hear the comments he came out with? I've, I've not seen the comments. So Kuta said, um, I had a good conversation with Barcelona and I thought I would go there, but then Man City appeared and showed me how things would be there. At first, I wanted to st stop thinking of him naked. Stop it. No, no. Stop it. <laughs> At first, at first, they, they oh, I've lost my train of thought completely. At first, they wanted me on loan. Um, the one first wanted to loan me out straight away, and then I spoke to Guardiola. He told me that he would do a pre-season with the first team, and from there, it would depend on me. Guardiola is very attentive, and said that if he was really happy, I was coming into the club, and it would be the best decision for me. So you know, obviously, Pep, Pep's done a masterpiece there, hasn't he? With, with getting him, I've not seen much of this lad. I'll be honest, but everything I read in the papers tells me he's going to be a really good signing for us. Do you, do you two know much about him? I've not seen much of his, his appearances for Brazil. I know he's been playing for the Brazil uh, youth team and he's done well with them. Um, all I can think of now is City Dave from his comments saying that if Barcelona or you know, Bayern or Real come looking, then we've not got a chance. But if, if his comments are true then it shows that actually we are the force that we can be, even though there's a two-year ban looming over us. Again, it's the pull of Pep, and it's a pull of what we want to do at the club. Well, he's, 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 he's 17, this lad. So he has literally got the world at his feet. He's a right-back, he's 17, he's, he's Brazilian. So obviously, with City have got had some current Brazilian connections, haven't they? and he's young enough to, I would think, be in the same friend group as Jesus. So yeah. Jesus is there for long term. Is there any is there any Brazilians in the in the um, Barcelona setup that you can think of offhand? There must be some. I know there's a quite a few Frenchmen and uh, I think a lot of their Brazilians all kind of got a bit older, didn't they? Yeah. So you've got Coutinho but he's not really in the in the mix, is he? No. So we're we're supposedly signing this lad for five and a half million quid. And so basically he he, he had the mindset of so City had the mindset of, as City normally do, buy them young, buy them cheap, sell them on at a cost after the um, stop it, stop it, <laughs> sell sell them off at a decent profit after after a couple of years after they played overseas. But obviously he's had a he's had a chat with Pep and agreed to put him in the first season, first team for the first year or so. And you know that'd be great for him, wouldn't it? Put him, put put a young lad, seventeen. I mean. It, it, I, 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 I'm, I'm always conscious of when I hear he's the next this, he's the next that. But if someone's going to say he's the next Danny Alves, they've, they've got that from somewhere, haven't they? He's got to have a little bit of talent there to be able to justify comments like that. What do you one think? Thing, well, one thing it says to me on, on, on a side note is uh, it sort of blasts out the rumours of Pep leaving. Fair you know, point. If, if, if Pep's bringing in these young lads and he's promised them game time and he's promising this that and the other he's obviously looking towards the next couple of years and this young Kuto and uh, that Aguila or something like that, whatever his yeah, name is who's on loan. He, he's not set to join City for another couple of years and what I've read about him he's apparently been promised the same he'll get regular first team football under Pep so hopefully it might be a side swing but yeah it's 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 a weird one for me because we're still talking about City and we have for the past few weeks or months in some cases about when are we going to start seeing some youth from our academy coming through. And I don't know whether this lad will still be treated the same or whether he will get this promised first team sheet. You know, we're obviously going through that phase again where our right back and left back positions are a little bit 
out of misfortune at the moment. We're struggling with Cancelo. That could be just because he's only on his first season. And Walker's getting to that stage now where he's entered his prime years. He either shows his good good form or he starts to dip. And we've been through that age scenario with Sanya and Zabaleta and Clichy and Kolarovic, and we wiped that clean. And we never went as young as this lad. So maybe it's another transitioning period for City. And who knows, we might be... In, in a sense, preparing for maybe a ban from the Champions League and maybe bringing some of these youth lads coming, uh, come, bringing some of these youth lads into the team. And I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't. No, mind I wouldn't. I quite enjoy Chelsea doing it with Lampard. I mean, I like Lampard. I like Lampard anyway. So that, yeah. I've got to be a, a, a spot for it. But what 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 Pep's basically said here is he's going to give Jan Kuta a pre-season with us, with the first team. And if he doesn't cut the mustard, we're going to ship him out on loan. So it's it's, it's literally the world and the opportunity for City is is at his feet. It's up to him to prove to Pep that he, he can cut it. Who who are our who are our top? Defenders at the moment. Who's our top right back? Because we got um, uh, Walker, Walker and yeah. what's his name? Cancelo. 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 It's up to him if he if he wants to have that number two slot. Because Walker Walker for me is I think Pep's favourite. Would you agree with me there? That's at right yeah. back. So it's it's up to him and, and Cancelo really. And if 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 Cancelo's coming with the price tag that he has done, he's going to have to do something really special to to overcome that and be in the first team regular next season. Into I think I think. I'm kind of selling myself out the point of him and doing the pre-season because I can't I can't see him being as good as, as Walker or Cancelo at the age he's at now. I can't see Cancelo being here next year, though, to be honest. Can you not? See, I can. Yeah. It's, it's funny you say I that. I honestly think he's going to end up a bigger flop than Mangala. And I don't yeah. I don't think it's his fault. I don't think it's his fault at all. I think, I mean, if you look at when Kolarov came to the Premier League from, um, from Serie A, he was slow. He was prone to foul ups defensively. He was all right going forward, but it took him a good year or two to adapt his game to the point where he wasn't just committing fouls or getting skinned every week. Mm-hmm. And at the time, we didn't really have we didn't really have much option. We didn't have much choice. We didn't have much sort of pulling power to just go and pick out. All right, well, let's go and get another left back. Here we go. We had Gail Clichy and we had Kolarov in. Um, Cancelo's come. He's He's not exactly the fastest, and he doesn't, like I said, the few games he has played, he hasn't looked like he's been trying to wow anybody. He just seems like he's just come on to do a job. But if you're second fiddle and you're supposed to be the most expensive right back in the world, you want to be saying, oh, hold on a minute, this is my spot. You give me a chance, and I walk up and do one. I, 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 yeah, I, I think he needs another season. I think like most players coming in, I think they need to, a season and a bit under Pep to, to get yeah. to the standard. And I, I think he'll stay, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with him next season. I hope so. I yeah. Hope so. And I'd like, I, I, I'd I like uh, Jan Kuto to go to Leeds. That's a good shout. Do you know what? If you think about it, either they're going to be promoted or they're going to be in the Championship still fighting for promotion. And either way, if they're a good team... And if they've got to go anywhere, keep him in this country and keep him with the thugs. Because Leeds are always known for being aggressive. I'd rather him be on that side than on the receiving end of a a rough challenge that could ruin him straight away, you know. I think he'd learn a lot. And then as from a defensive point of view, if you can pick up one or two uh, dirty tricks from Leeds, all the better. Because that's, mi- that's something we're really missing at City. Yeah, yeah. We need a shit house. You're on about Benucci. Yeah. You know, Fernandinho, he he put some dodgy stuff in, but he's always smiling about it. He's, he's the lovable rogue. We just need that arsehole. Mm. Speaking of that, do you think, um, uh, what's his name, Kaloubi? Kaloubi? God, how do you pronounce his name? Koulibaly. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> hey, what's, how do you pronounce it? Koulibaly. Koulibaly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you think he's got, got a bit of balance, he's got a bit of aggression about him? Because obviously he's still rumoured to be wanted by City. Yeah, I've I've seen him play a few times, and Napoli. I don't see them as that sort of team. He, he, he's he's a standout centre back without a doubt. He's a big, bulky lad, but he he comes across to me from the games I see him as almost. I'm prepared to say, and I may be completely wrong, shy and timid. He he doesn't look like this proper Vincent Company style brute of a centre-back that isn't afraid to go in for these challenges. He may come off worse, he may come off good, but he just 
I, I don't know if it's just because of the select games I've seen him. He just doesn't look like a proper centre back. He's good at tackling. He's good at the defensive side of it. He just doesn't look like he could win a, a fight with a paper bag, in my view. Interesting. No, interesting. Hey, listen. I know this is about Cooley, but I don't think he's going to ever leave Napoli. Mm. I think he's going to be the flop that never was because how many years now have, has he been in the media line? Like every transfer window, all the big clubs are after him and yet nobody's made an official mm. bid or a real attempt to get him. Surely, you know, it's been two or three years now his name has been mentioned. It's not just like a, he's, he's an emerging player. He's in his mid-20s, isn't he? He's like 26, 27. I think he's even close to 29 now. Yeah, 20, yeah. 29. He's 28. So, mm -hmm. I, I think there's something... I mean, he might be fantastic for Napoli. He might be happy where he is. But I think a lot of it is just media speculation, bit of hype. I, I don't think he'd ever live up to it. I'm kind of glad we haven't gone for him, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, we'll see. Well, is there anything else you two, you two like to talk about in the you've seen in the press? Has there any rumours you've seen knocking about? Only I'll say this, Gabriel Jesus, I know he'll probably be listening because he knows how much I love him. I uh, I'm, not, I'm not loving him at the moment with his new hairstyle. He looks fucking ridiculous. What's he done? Uh, he's got hair down to the lower of his shoulders, dreadlocked. Like a... <laughs> um... That's not it, I think. What, what, what's the... T oh, I can't think of the name. Hairstyle. Um, oh, that's the one. Thorn Rose. Yeah, it, it, it he just looks ridiculous, and he doesn't know how to he don't know how to work a camera when he's doing his training videos as well. Half half his face is missed out, and you can't even see any of the football. Drinks. It's not him. He's probably, yeah. he's probably inside having a drink. I need to. <laughs> where, where, where have you where have you seen this about his hair? I need to find a picture of this to get it on the social media. It was on his uh, his Facebook page, I believe, Instagram right. or Facebook. Right. Well, that won't take me long to track down. Yeah, we'll have a we'll, we'll have a, we'll have a scout out. It's probably it's probably somebody else wearing a wig. I'm telling you. I hope so, because he's put white bloody shell beads in it. <laughs> Does that mean, Dan, that you're not going to try and uh, imitate his hairstyle? Uh, I might imitate imitate his uh, Puma advertising, the same as Sterling. I don't know about his hairstyle. Uh... <laughs> 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 Oh, bless you. Right, well, I'll find a picture of that. I'll post it on social media. And, uh, yeah, lads, we'll, we'll love you and leave you. It's uh, we've got another pod on Wednesday night, haven't we? I think so, yeah. Can I just uh, make two quick points? Of course you can. So one of them is in response to the comment made on the, was it the YouTube from Slam Dunk? Yes. With regards to Harry Kane? Yes. I love it, because I can't stand Harry Kane. I hope he never Same does. here. Same uh, here. Ju just, just, for, um, just for argument's sake and to sort of draw a line under it, Harry Kane in the Premier League, 201 games, 136 goals, 20 assists. Mm. Yeah, it's not Sergio bad. Aguero, 261 games, 180 goals. He's got 46 assists. Mm. And Jesus, he's only played 92 in the Prem. He's got 14 assists already. Kane is nothing but a greedy, lanky bastard, and he can stay in London. <laughs> Well, I'm assuming he's not coming on the podcast any day soon then. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Rather off Peter Crouch. Just, just, to, just to tell everyone where, where this has come from, um, obviously um, the Slam Dunk podcast, the Transfer Rumour Gossip podcast that we run on a, on a Friday, uh, went out on Saturday and somebody commented on, on YouTube. And I'll, I'll read the comment out to what, to what Chris is saying. Um, the comment goes as follows. Not Kane again, lads. And you kind of know where this is going, don't you? I, I totally disagree. Firstly, I don't think he would cut it in Pep's team. He's not he's not a passing or combative player. He's not a fast player and his stammer isn't what it would be in our team. And secondly, there's no way City would pay like £130 million for him and we should not do that anyway. We've got Aguero's successor in Gabriel Jesus and his stats rising year on year, every year. We don't need a striker in the transfer window. But if we were to sign one due to injury concerned we'd have to sign somebody who's cheaper and who's okay to be in the third position. Third, I'm assuming third striker position, they mean, uh, back up to uh, Jesus. Uh, we need our money to go on centre-backs and front wing positions. When he says front wing, does he mean wingers like Sane? And, uh, yeah, I think he's yeah. like an inside uh, forward kind of yeah, yeah. Front wing positions beside Gabriel uh, stayed at City for so long because he knew that he would be the starter once Aguero leaves and we can't have him playing second choice to another player. 
Um, we can't get a better striker until Sergio leaves, as Haaland might stay at another season at Dortmund because he's moved, only just moved there. We can get him in the summer. Haaland and Gabriel would be a wonderful and a and the competition between them would only help us. Well written, and I can't remember your name, do apologise. And yeah, I think that's pretty damning for Harry Kane, and I, I can't argue with any point there. No, he's, he's, he's worded that absolutely perfect, really. But, well, bar one thing, I do think we need a striker in this uh, summer window. Just a young lad, you know. We, we, I agree with him that Jesus is going to be first choice when Aguero leaves, that's without question, unless City go out and buy a Messi-style player uh, for the sake of Dave, Ronaldo-style player, um, just for that one season. I don't see us doing that, and uh, Jesus is going to be that main man, and I think we need to sign a young lad, even if it's in January, just to get him implemented into the team a little bit. Like the Laporte, when company left, we had Laporte stepping up. And I think we need that with a striker because if we've just got Jesus, that's not everything. As much as I love him, that's not everything. Uh, thanks to uh, Maria Marion for that comment on YouTube. There's only a quick look. Can't disagree with you, Dan. Is anyone in the youth academy that could take that step up, though? I always thought Lucas Metcher would do it, but he, he seems to be here, there and everywhere. I, mean, I don't even know if he's still signed on with the club or if he's moved permanently now. I'm not sure. No, he's, he's still on loan, but... I think players like him and uh, is it Patrick Roberts as well? He was a bit of a, mm. a hope. I think they're both. They've been loaned out so much. I think they're just past it. I don't think they're ever going to make it at City. I'd mm. love to see Fabio Silva from. Um, I think it's Porto. Porto, he's, uh, Porto yeah, yeah. I like Fabio that lad. Silva, get him in there. Him and uh, Bernardo Silva as well. Mm. Nice little link. So yeah, someone like him. Not a Portuguese That's interesting. I'll, I'll, I'll do a bit of re what was the lad's name? So I'll do some research on him. Fabio Silva. Fabio. Oh, I've literally right. Just this season, he's made his break into the Porto first team. He's been capped at every level for Portugal's youth academy, you know, youth teams. He's scored. He's become Porto's youngest ever player and youngest ever goal scorer. He beat uh, Ruben Neves for that. So he's got some potential. 17. He's only 17. Yeah. 17-year-old. So the only other point I wanted to make, lads, is... Uh, is Probably leave it as an open question for uh, comments. To do with uh, player numbers, I've shared it. There was, a, I think, it was the Manchester Evening News did a little article about squad numbers for the coming season and like would players get a promotion? You know, so like Edison's thirty, what, is it thirty-one or something? His squad number at the minute, and it's like, will he get the number one shirt? I, I don't think in this day and age uh, a squad number is that important, to be quite honest, unless it's something sentimental. Um, I, I think it's a bit. I think it must have been a slow news day, but I just wondered what everyone else's opinion on. Do you know what? Leave, leave that as an open question, and we will discuss that on Wednesday if that's all right. Because I think that's a really good question. Yeah, yeah, go for it. I think that's a really, really good question because that, that we could we could definitely fill some time with that. And this one's uh, short and sweet, and you'll have me talking for ages if we don't end it soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant lads! Listen, that has been the City Social Manchester's Blue Show. Done well there. Cheeky, yeah. cheeky half an hour. We'll, we'll get that p p posted out and uh, <laughs> might get another reply from Marion. Yeah, hopefully. Love it. Cheers, lads. Have a cracking week and I'll speak to you, speak to you on Wednesday. Yep. Take care, guys. Stay safe. Cheers, bye. Take care, boys. Thanks for watching the City Social by the Manchester is Blue show. If you like our content, we would really appreciate it if you shared this with your friends and family and even go the extra mile and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Your support and positive reviews go a huge way to increasing our visibility to City fans just like you everywhere. Don't forget, you can also follow us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Cheers.